G'day viewers, my name is Michael and welcome back to Single Racer and especially to my new subscribers, thanks again for coming along the journey with me and I hope some of you get some benefit out of this uh, slight tutorial. And the reason for this tutorial is because on the very eve of Build 2 of Assetto Corsa Competizione, I had kind of heard vibes that people were having a bit of trouble with, uh, shall we say, the lower end wheels. You know, your basic wheels, similar to what I've got. I've got the Logitech Driving Force GT wheel. And although it's a fantastic wheel for the price, um, I've heard that some people run into a couple of problems. So I did as well, and I just want to run over how I fixed them. Now, I'm in uh, build one still, but it's been patched twice, so it's build uh, 0 0.1.2, and I'll just go over the three or four things that I figured out um, using my own wheel. And first up is the talk about what you call inverted. So if we go to the main wheel menu here, uh, inverted normally implies a slightly negative or maybe the opposite effect kind of thing. So meaning that if I change this to inverted, I went into uh, the game itself and it's exactly what it said. So when I turned left, the game wheel turned right, being inverted or the opposite effect of what it should be. So I simply clicked that to normal and then the game responded as it should. When I turn left, it turned left and vice versa. But here is where I struck my first problem with arguably what you might refer to as a lower end wheel. Now, no offense by that, of course, I've got one as well, but we all can't afford the direct drive wheels. Um, so let me go back and show you what I'm talking about by loading just a simple single player. It doesn't all I want to do is show you what the result is. And what was happening as it loads was the fact that I was having um, trouble getting both the brake and accelerator to work. So here's the error that I had. Now I have my foot completely off and away from the pedals. And they are both stuck on on. Now if I press the brake it goes to actually off and the same with the throttle and I'm I so it, I'll hold the throttle down just uh, so I've got full throttle now and if I let go see it goes to full on but I can understand someone as a long-term gamer I'm talking over 20 years I can understand someone who hasn't got the experience naturally thinking oh this game's buggy or it doesn't work with my wheel you know and being upset and totally understandably but it's just figuring out those little problems. So what we do now is if we go back and quit and um, you know it's, it's just a bit of trial and error and we go back to the options now because this to me does sound illogical. Now to get your steering and your throttle and your brake to work all you do is click on it. But if you hold the mouse over, as hopefully you can see here, and click on advanced, if you click on advanced, for whatever reason, this, they've chosen to have at least in maybe the lower end wheels inverted, so saying yes to inverted, as implying that you have your foot off the accelerator. So we go confirm. So I'll just double check that, click on advanced again, confirm, yes that's good, it's stayed on. Because if you don't click confirm it just defaults back to no of course. And there it is no on the um, brake. So we switch it to inverted for yes and confirm. And then now let's go back and just bear with me on this same thing so you can see. But I'm doing this all in real time, just so you can see exactly the effect it's having. Now, I know it's a, a little bit um, annoying to put up with the menu, but I just want to show you. So if we go drive now, so I've confirmed, and there we go, right? So my steering set to normal is correct. So I'm turning left, and now I'm turning right. 
but for some reason the brake and pedals need to be inverted at least on my very early force feedback wheel. So now when I press the accelerator, there it goes, perfect, and when I press the brake, perfect. Okay, so now that's working, let's go to problem two you might be having. And that's in relation to the force feedback itself. Now, I've got to say, let, let me say, I, I think the force feedback, in fact, I think this game is brilliant considering this is build one. I mean, I'm extremely happy with it. The graphics, the handling, everything. Based on the fact that I run both Assetto Corsa Original and Project Cars 2 with files. So they're the Jack Spade files to get my force feedback to the perfect level. And I only did that after years of testing. So to say that the force feedback in this game is very close to being good right from build one, I think is fantastic for the future of this game. But anyway, let's go back now and we'll talk about the, the second problem that I had, which was the force feedback settings. And I only say this because as an old time gamer, I wasn't originally familiar with the word gain. To me, if I said, I want force feedback at 100, I would have thought that logically, at least for me, but bear, your, bear in mind I am an Australian, so we aren't the brightest in the, in the pack, but um, for me, minimum force would be force feedback. So let's do that now. And we'll go, I actually should have gone the opposite way. This is one good thing about this game, and I'll show you here, is you can go the opposite way. So that's, I actually, but it, it still would have been better because it goes up to 200. So it would have still been longer. But anyway, if I go now the opposite way and we go um, minimum force 100, thinking that that's the maximum force feedback, and then just to show you what I'm talking about, if I set this to 30, all right, because this is the problem that I was getting. So I want to mimic a problem you might be getting and how to fix it. So if we go back now, and again, just bear with me, the, we loaded up. The great thing about these menus too is this might be the Unreal Engine 4 is it doesn't take ages that I get very frustrated with uh, race room, uh, race, racing experience seems to take forever to load. So this is very quick. But now, listen, uh, sorry. Can you hear my, if I'm, what I'm hoping is if you can hear my wheel vibrating. So it's vibrating like crazy. There it goes. I'm hoping you can hear that. I'll, I'll just turn my mic. Just hang on. Bear with me just in case you can't because while I'm recording it, I'm not sure if you can hear it. So I'll just turn the mic and hopefully you'll hear this. Okay, so if you're getting that non-stop rumble vibration, let's go back and fix that now. And that is because simply that the um, it seems to be the gain that is considered um, as the main force feedback. So we set the minimum force, and mind you, I've got to be honest and say, I don't know what it is yet. Maybe that could be set to 30, but I assume, you know, it's it's when the force feedback, sorry, comes in. You know, at what point does it start to come in? And I haven't experimented with that. And mind you, all these things can change. So this is not really my settings video. This is just problem solving video initially if you're having these same issues. So now, if I set the gain to 100, um, or actually I had it uh, at 75, because I have a set of course that's set at 75, I'm one of those that like a light force feedback, and I used to have it at 100 till I watched a tutorial by um, 
Yorkie, uh, uh, Yorkie 65, I think it is, the, the guy doing the Project Cars 2 videos. Um, and he has a light setting, and he talked about how having it too high a force feedback on, a, on an entry-level wheel can actually kind of mask or smother the force feedback and you don't get those little subtle things so ever since i've had it at, at 75 i've noticed much more feeling in the road especially that what people refer to as the center of the road when your wheels just in the middle and and some people say they feel nothing on the road and that's because they might have it too set too high and they're not feeling the road they're just feeling heavy effects so as we drive now, now mind you, I'm not, I'm not a good uh, <laughs> 2D pancake driver anymore. I'm so used to VR and can't wait for the next build to come out. I think tomorrow or the day after. And there we go. So I've got beautiful. Now, obviously, I can't translate this to you, but I've got beautiful four speed feedback, nice and strong, but telling me everything that the car is doing. But the more important thing is that um, I'm still. If I go here and I go too hard and deliberately squeal, I still get a bit of rumble. So the, the you might have heard that. The rumble is still there when I hit the wall and things like that. But at least you're not getting that shocking vibration that you might get um, there, like uh, constantly while you're driving. So now that that's solved, let's go to the final problem that uh, might um, affect some viewers and this could be a general thing because one of the most common um, things that I've heard is about the car understeering and I've discovered something purely by accident that could be why why the car is understeering so let me just show you again and just because i'm in pancake mode and i've never driven this way i always drive in uh bonnet view when i used to drive in in um using a monitor but if i just show you better here so if i turn and i get this whoa understeer so if i'm mimicking it now i'm not getting it now but i'm just trying to show you in the demo so if i turn in and what happens is as i turn the wheel say to 30 percent it starts to really understeer like that again i'm just mimicking it but as you turn the more the faster you go and the more you turn the less it wants to turn let me show you how now that was just a, uh, the brake vibrating the wheel, and that's what I like. There's still vibration there, but it's telling me that I'm under the braking pressure, and I like that. So I don't want it to go away altogether. But let's go back now to the options, and, and I'll show you how I fixed it. And that is because, for whatever reason, um, whether, whether it's the, the engine, or uh, as in the game engine, or something, but I have a set of Corsa, and this is just my view, and this is why I discovered it, maybe, and some people are not. But I use a 240 um, wheel turn, or wheel rotation, and that is because I want the car to handle like a very tight F1 car, or maybe a GT3 car, meaning that all I do is turn it from where I rest my hands at... at um, on, a, on a clock dial at 9 and 3 o'clock. So when I turn the wheel... The maximum I generally turn the wheel, except for a hairpin, is 12 to 6. So I turn it from my resting hand at 9 to 3 o'clock on a clock face to 12 and 6. But I do that using a wheel rotation of 240 as opposed to the standard wheel rotation that most people use of 900, which treats it more like a truck thing where you have two or three rotation similar to a car but it's that mimicking that car that real life car feel but what was happening when i set it here into 240 the same with project cars 2 was it seemed worse it seemed almost exaggerated this understeer and then i realized that it dawned on me that it could be now using the same thing as project cars 2 meaning that if i take it 240 wheel rotation from here and go the opposite way now i did find that that was a bit too much so i settled on 
about 1160. I found 1160 was perfect. But for Mike Smith over at Sim Racing 604, who I know uses, a, it's either a 540 or a 560, but definitely a 500 wheel rotation as opposed to the 900, he could set this to the middle. So instead of 240, you could have it, you know, around the 800 or 500 and experiment with that setting. But now what happens if I set that, it was uh, actually, sorry, it was 1160. So if we go back and that's automatically saved. And if we go back now in the final bit of tuning in my wheel. Now remember, this isn't my wheel settings because this will change as the game develops. And I go back to what I said about um, both uh, Assetto Course and Project Cars 2 being so long in development, you, you add your force feedback changes like Jack Spade's files or some things that you experiment with. So in my mind, it's a bit too early to give you my general settings. These are just the settings now that helped me. So now what happens, and again, I'll just go to our car, outside the car, so you get a better view as well. But what happens now is all that understeer, for me, feels gone because I've got my 240. So here, as I turn, so I haven't gone... So what I'll do is I'll, you can't see my wheel, so I'll tell you, I've, I'm going from about 2 o'clock to um, 8 o'clock turning left. Again, 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock, so I'm barely turning the wheel and I'm getting really nice turn in by changing that setting. And here, I'm, I'm barely getting to 12.6. I'm getting more like, say, 10 to 11 to uh, 4 and 5. And it's beautiful, it's nice and tight. It's responding well. The force feedback is fantastic because I've turned the game up to 75 but have got no um, minimum force on and I'm feeling the road. I'm feeling the car. This is absolutely fantastic in my opinion and I can't wait for the next build to in a day or two with the VR. So I hope that helped at least someone who was experiencing those problems same as me and this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time. See you later. Oh, and happy racing.